hi and welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Very exciting to be part of this amazing series and obviously also being part of the summit. I'm super excited for it and looking forward to it. Oh man, like we are so happy that, that you're part of it because the idea was to actually have some kind of variety, um, you know, during the summit to have some kind of break from the business kind of thing, you know, and, and that's why we invited you to come along. And thank you so much for agreeing to actually be part of it. Um, Lisa, please tell us exactly, you know, a little bit about yourself first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm super excited. And of course, um, I have the opening slot, which I'm honored uh, to uh, launch the summit with, which is going to be really exciting because we're obviously talking about neurohacking and neuroscience and setting everyone up for success. So I think that's a very exciting energy to start the day with. Yeah, this is always the moment when you're supposed to start with a I am statement. I am so many things and every one of us is. And I think that's already a great introduction about me and my um, area of expertise. Because when we're talking about neuroscience, you actually become what you are. So our mind so much focuses on what do we identify with and what is our identity. And so I always like to underline that and just really define different identities for myself so first and foremost of course i am a neurohacker i am a certified hypnotherapist i am the founder as well of the health hacking hub which is a digital app-based platform that helps you to integrate neuroscience and sense hacking and biohacking into your everyday life but I'm also a aliveness seeker, I would call myself. I'm also a global citizen, having moved from Europe to Cape Town. And I strive to be so many more things in the future and to be a role model with that. Amazing. I mean, we, we can't wait. Now, like, <laughs> tell us a bit about the hypnotherapy. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm like I'm a Gen Xer, so like hypnotherapy to me seems like something like uh, like a bit of a gimmick that people do on stage and like people mm -hmm. walk around, you know, like chickens <laughs> when they hear a buzzword or whatever. <laughs> How far has hypnotherapy come? Because clearly, you know, in your context, it's actually quite a serious thing and has uh, many Absolutely. benefits. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, let's definitely give a quick introduction into that field because it is an up and rising field and it's becoming very modern and the method is uh, getting reaching a bigger audience. But there's still a big stigma around it and a lot of people, the majority has seen the stage hypnotherapy or hypnosis and that's not at all what it is. What I always like to explain it with is that I say it's a relaxation state. So what we do with hypnotherapy, we're obviously making use of neuroscientific concepts. So what we do is we basically just literally put your brain in a different state. So we induce a hypnotic state, a relaxation state that allows us to literally access information in your brain that you're not able to access in your rational state. So the way you and I are speaking right now, we are on different brain waves or operating on different brain waves. And so that means we only have access to limited potential and information in our brain. But if we really want to remove deeply rooted problems that we carry around with us in our lives, and every single person carries that around, then we need to find ways to access that information because our mind is uh, a machine that tries to protect us at all costs and there's so much playing into that there's so much of our evolutionary coding playing into that how our mind can really be our biggest enemy if we don't learn how to control it but can also be our best friend if we know how to direct it and how to live our life with intention and give the right cognitive commands fantastic and like really like mind-blowing how far you know um the study the study of the brain has actually come in, in in the past couple of decades but i mean what does all this stuff have to do with business <laughs> A lot. And I think we have to like look at it from a, a broader perspective, because obviously, on the one hand, the business perspective, but on the other hand, as well, we're obviously talking about a summit here that's mainly directed at women. So we also have to look at our female business journey. So that's something that I always like to differentiate. So something very exciting for business is just our business identity, our business performance, our creativity all of those are impacted by our thoughts and the images that we present to our brain and so our entire reality is based and 
developed on that. So if I'm feeding my mind negative images and negative phrases, negative self-talk, negative expressions every single day, and that is something that I get to control. No one can tell me what to think. I can allow certain information in. I get to define it. I get to rephrase it. And that is having an impact on my brain. So no matter what's happening around you, it's all almost like your ears are your gate. And I always like to use that visualization where you're saying, there's a gate literally here. So if I'm allowing to open that gate for information to pass through, then that's my control. I can totally say I'm not allowing that energy in, I'm not allowing those thoughts in, or if something toxic gets in, I am able to redefine it, reprogram it, and then actually feed my brain positive information. And I always like to use the term fuel my brain fuel my body and fuel my brain. So how are you fueling your brain today is always a good question to go through life with, to just check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of that is impacting how creative you are, how you are able to perform. And that's something that oftentimes gets neglected. And that's obviously also, also how we came together with the masterclass about 360 degree health hacking, that where are, yeah. We're always just focused on the goal, but are we actually looking at the foundation? Is the foundation actually there to achieve that goal? So I'd say that's the business perspective. If we're looking now at the female business journey, boy, that's such an additional thing to look at. So that's something I'm very passionate about because I've had so many situations where I was working alongside with male colleagues and male business partners. And we just very reflectively had to realize we are very different in how we operate. As women, we go through cycles. We go through emotional cycles, hormonal cycles, and that just means that we have different energy levels, that we really need to go on that route in alignment with that. And that's something that I'm really passionate uh, about to create awareness around that, because we're always pushing ourselves to be better, to do better. But are we actually taking all of those factors into account? Yeah, and and uh, I must say, you know, we 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 should actually embrace our our differences and and diversity, and um, you know, it's in in a world of of, of trying to sort of um, clump all of us in the same kind of box these days. Yeah. Um, I really do think that you know, from a scientific point of view, what you've just pointed out is that you know, yeah, we are different, you know, and and that things should actually um, be, um, you know you know you should you should try and like fix the problem in a, in a different kind of way I suppose you know for whether you're a man or a woman but um Lisa I'm looking at your website now Lisa the Lisa Zimmerman.com and you do private um, consultations in private therapy um I, I see that that uh you know the fields of uh, and services that you uh encompass uh anxiety relief, uh, addictive behavior, sleep problems, sexual performance issues, pain and stress management, emotional eating and dieting, uh, and many more. Um, if somebody was to see you, how long does it actually take for you to be able to get to this place where you, you're like, nope, I don't want any negativity, I'm fueling my brain with the right stuff, whatever. What is like the average amount of time that somebody can expect to be at that sweet spot? Yeah. Yeah, of course, on the one hand, I always like to point out this is a lifestyle. So you either discover it in your life and you open that door. And every one of us who has opened that door knows exactly what moment that was in the past. And from there, your entire life changes and you want to know more. You operate on a different system, basically. And it just becomes your lifestyle to find more ways to fuel your brain and your body, to be better, to be in better control and to realize like I said before, I'm creating my reality. So it really depends on me how I'm going through life. And I can't achieve certain results and can't reach certain life goals if I'm not dealing with that, if I'm not creating that identity, that personality, if I'm not producing the right emotions as well. So it's a very proactive approach, actually. Of course, if I'm working with clients one on one, it's a more reactive approach that trans transitions into a proactive approach, then that becomes a lifestyle. But that's the beauty of neuroscience and hypnotherapy, because we are accessing different levels in our brain, we are able to create and reach very effective results. So with that, within even just one session, we're able to identify the core of the issue because we're removing all the shatter, we're removing all the clouded information that our rational mind is trying to 
put on us to just keep us safe, to keep us from not dealing with the pain, because who wants to deal with the pain? That's our evolutionary wiring driving us away from actually dealing with the problem. And we're thinking that we're reaching something in life, but it's only a clouded thinking. So once we remove that, it's very easy for the mind, if you give it clear instructions, to really go back to the core of the problem. And once you've identified that core, you're then working with that core in a session. And we're crushing the core first, so you use different neuro tools for that. And then you're literally reprogramming the brain. And that's the beauty of science in this past decade, because before that, we always thought, OK, we're children, and that's when our brain forms, and that's it. Now end of our lives, we can't change anything about it. But the contrary is the case. So we can still, in our 30s, 40s, 50s, we can still change our brain structure, literally change it. And so with the right instructions and the right neuro tools, we can A, grow new brain cells, and B, grow new brain connections. And these new brain connections then release hormones and neurotransmitters that fuel our behavior. And so that is our goal-setting machine that then puts up, up puts us up for success and helps us to actually move away from that negativity and negative behavior patterns and reprogram and recondition ourselves for success in the future and for actually being able to reach our goals. Great. And I mean, you know, if, if somebody maybe, what would be the one thing that somebody can do right now? You know, obviously, if, if they didn't have that, you know, the privilege of the time um, to see someone like you, obviously, that would be like ideal. But what would be the one thing that that someone could change right now um, to see some kind of positive movement forward um, mm -hmm. against what they are trying to to fix or change? Yeah, I mean, that question in itself is something that actually led me to also widen my product portfolio, because of course, the sessions are more intense. And it normally only requires one to three sessions, mainly just one session to solve the issue. But wow. of course, it's more cost effective and cost intensive. Um, but I also offer just hypnotic audio recordings that you can download, which is an easy first step for you to just recondition your mind and work with an issue that works in particularly well for addictive behavior, for anxiety control, for just breaking negative thought loops. But the one thing is a neuro tool that I would share with you right away, and that's neuro associations and neuro linguistics. And that is, of course, something that I'm going to dive deeper into in my keynote in the summit. But that is just something to realize that your expressions and your language and terminology has a direct impact on your body, on your brain health, and on your life quality, you have to say. And so they're just picking up and just starting to realize what kind of negative language am I surrounded by, either by other people or by myself, just picking up those words and just note them down, just start to realize oh my God, I always keep saying I'm so super stressed. This work is killing me. Those are all terms that are not good because they're putting our brain and our body in a fight or flight state. And that releases negative hormones like cortisol and that is a direct attack on our immune system. And so just becoming aware of those terminologies and noting them down, that's already the first thing that you can do. And then there's more tools how you can reframe these and how you can rephrase it. So you can actually then condition yourself for positive thinking. So that's the first thing that I would tell people to do right away, become aware of all the negativity that you're surrounded by. So, so instead of going, oh no, I shouldn't have finished that whole bottle of wine last night, I go, you know what, I really love wine and wine is great. <laughs> and then I'm not stressed out about it anymore. <laughs> I mean, that's that's another neuro tool where it's about uh, conscious decision making. Um, that's what I also like to apply for my personal diet and nutrition, where I'm saying I don't like that you can't eat certain things and that you have to demand yourself to be super strict with yourself because yeah, that can have a flipping effect that that is then anxiety inducing again and is bringing back negative thoughts, although you're trying to move away from it. So what I like to practice is just conscious decision making and conscious choices. So if you're saying, okay, tonight is the night when I want to have a wine, I'm making that conscious choice that this is fine tonight, but I'm also making the conscious choice that I'm realizing I've got the control 
tonight I'm deciding I'm having the wine, tomorrow I can decide differently again. And not getting into this loop of, okay, I failed today, very negative yeah. linguistic word. I failed today, so I, I am a failure. That would be a negative identity. So self-inducing and reconditioning yourself without realizing even we're doing that every single day and no one is paying attention to it. So just being very aware and just making conscious choices, that's already a very good practice to go through life with. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And and not beating yourself up too much about it because the exactly. sun will rise again the next day. Yeah, I, I, I cannot wait to see what, what you have in store for us. I believe it's going to be an immersive um, segment as well. So I, I'm very much excited about it. Um, we're going to come to the end of the interview, but I only uh, I have one more question to ask that I ask everybody. Okay. Lisa Zimmerman, are you a digital diva? <laughs> Uh, this is uh, a question I was expecting in some form and I've been thinking about how to respond to it and I may respond to it in a different way than the other interview partners <laughs> because first of all actually when you invited me to be part of the summit I have to talk neurohacking now again. I was actually in my condition and with my definitions in my mind I had the term diva or diva associated with a couple of negative traits as well. So I had to kind of like use my own my own uh, tools on myself to be like, okay, let's redefine it. And what does it actually mean in this scope to you? And so what it means to me now is to really step into your strength as a woman, not just to become a power boss lady that we all want to strive uh, towards, but rather more actually do things on your own terms. And really with embarking on this business and entrepreneurial journey to realize you did this for reasons. So there's non-negotiables attached to it. There's dreams attached to it. There's reasons why you're doing these things. And for me, a lot of my terms are, I want to create more flexibility. When something happens to my family, I want to be able to be there. And so building a business that's aligned with those values is something that I find to be a digital diva trait that you should embrace and stepping into that power and stepping into your, your own personal strength and then designing your business journey around that. That's how I define the term for me now. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Lisa, do you have anything else you'd like to, to tell the listeners before we, we say goodbye? Well, maybe I'm thinking we can give them a little teaser because uh -huh. we're talking about that my keynote might actually also include a little practical experience of actually being able to experience hypnotherapy and what this hypnosis feels like for yourself. So just leaving it at that, but giving out that little teaser. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa. Very much looking forward to it. August 25th, if you haven't bought your ticket yet, um, innovationcity.co.za forward slash digital dash divas. Tickets are still on sale. Um, very limited tickets available. Uh, so yeah, come and see Lisa and the rest of the 20 other amazing female speakers at the uh, summit. Lisa, thank you very much. And can't wait to see you back in Cape Town. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to it. Great. Cool. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.